everyone my name is Abhishek Jain and welcome back to the video series on how one should start learning the blockchain technology and this is part 2 before continuing this video I would highly recommend you to watch part 1 as this video is in a continuation to a part 1 and I have already provided the part 1 video link in a comment section if you see on my screen I try to put together all the blockchain essential component for example smart contract EBM encryption blockchain key value DB Merkle tree consensus right if you don't know anything about the blockchain then this picture would be completely complete mystery for you and you will not be able to make any sense out of it right but no problem but if you know a little bit about the blockchain and you have heard some of these words then you can make some sense out of this picture but no problem in any of the case right we will together find out in an upcoming section how those components are connected with each other how those components talk to each other and how those how this architecture allow us to develop you know the decentralized application top of it now the another question which would be hanging in your mind by watching the part one like how these component help you know to overcome the limitation and the security vulnerabilities that we have defined in the part one right part one uh, for centralized application architecture right now let's begin our interesting story to find out the answer of those questions which we have laid out laid down but we will see what we're gonna cover in this particular video first right so before starting let us quickly do the recap what we had covered in the previous video in the last video we understood about the centralized application architecture and its working we also try to briefly understand the limitation and the security vulnerabilities of the centralized application architecture then we saw blockchain technology architecture allows to overcome with the limitation related to the single point of failure which is one of the one of the one of the limitations we also understood how blockchain based application are highly available even though few machines are down so before starting to find out the mystery behind the first page picture which we're gonna cover in this the next thing which we will cover how does the essential component of blockchain connects with each other and makes the blockchain network on which you can build the decentralized application so let's start understanding the the mystery of the first page right but before starting that the another thing which I think would be really important for all of us to understand the blockchain definition which is you know hanging around all over the network all over the internet right then the types of blockchain network which we can build then blockchain essential component is pretty much the same content which we have seen on the first page so I will just you know highlight definition says the blockchain technology is known as a distributed ledger technology on which the transactions are claimed to be secured immutable distributed and trustless okay just concentrate on the bold part or the bold terminology distributed ledger secured immutable distributed and trusted and we will talk about in the upcoming videos and we will see how the blockchain concept blockchain components which we will be putting together in a very logical way and we will once that logical picture gets drawn by those essential component then we will see how we can achieve all these attributes then the types of blockchain network so we can broadly categorize our blockchain network in three categories public blockchain consortium and the private blockchain so public blockchain is a permissionless blockchain where any computer can join the network and start participating in that so you just need an internet connection you don't need any specific permission for that. on the other hand the consortium and the private is completely the permission one the only difference between these two consortium kind of blockchain network where you have a group of industries or the party which are controlling this permission and the accesses in the private only the central industry or the one particular industry will be controlling all the permission related stuff then we have these essential component which we have seen on the very first page now we will try to just put all those components in a logical flow and see how those looks like I mean see to start with just think about it we have a one particular machine which is running on an AWS cloud okay. and we have EVM installed in it install on it as software right so EVM is nothing but Ethereum virtual machine right so I'm saying is 
let's consider this as a software so it's not a specific software which we need to install it comes with a lot of stuff as well but i'm just to make it more simpler right then we have a smart contract right so we have to store a smart contract pretty much same same way the kind of we install the you know the install the evm but do, for inst storing a smart contract we have some specific terminology related to you know the, uh, in the related to the blockchain term related to the blockchain uh, terminology right now so what exactly the smart contract actually the smart contract makes the blockchain platform programmable when i say programmable so whatever feature you want to develop over the blockchain network that you have to achieve with the smart contract and how and and, and, and in a simple word a smart contract is a piece of code it's a it's a piece of you know the program right and now the question arises how you can develop and in which language you can develop this right so for ethereum we majorly we use the solidity which is a high level programming language which pretty much looks like a javascript in which you can write the smart contract similarly for other blockchain development platform each and every platform has a specific supportability for the high for the smart contract for hyperledger i think we, we write we can write a smart contract in java they are having trying to in, enhance that for the javascript as well similarly other platform provides the supportability of other programming languages Right. Then now we have an application which which now we have a smart contract which can run on an EVM, right? Which is pretty similar to the JVM Java Virtual Machine. Now we need to store a data, right? In storing a data, so blockchain technology has a very specific way to store a data. So in blockchain, we store a data in the form of blocks, and blocks contain multiple messages and the transaction in the form of hash, and we're gonna see what is hash. Okay. And we will also see in upcoming videos how the blocks looks like, right? And the, the and the blocks, once that gets created and we store the block hash in the key value storage, we, we're gonna see how, how we do that, right? Then we have an encryption. We use an encryption, a two, in, basically two encryption methodology. First is hashing, which we use to hash the data. So what exactly the hashing is? Hashing algorithms are where we can where we can input the variable size of data and that creates and that outputs the fixed length of encrypted data and in ethereum we use the sha256 for that digital signature the another algorithm which we used and that did that help us to authenticate the originator of a message or a transaction on a data right now we have these essential component which are running on our one particular machine Apart from that, we have another component as well, but I, I, I will be explaining those as well. Just think about it. These components makes one particular machine. Now we have a similar three machines and we can have hundred of machines which have a permission to just create this network, right? Another thing which we need to understand is the most important part of the blockchain is consensus. What exactly the consensus is? Consensus algorithm ensures the validity of a message and a transaction and it also ensures the data replication and all the machines and that is how we create a distributed shared ledger, ledger data. Decentralized consensus provides the extreme level of fault tolerance as well and that ensures the zero dying time that we're gonna see how does that happen right. The, another thing is this green ring which I just put it again just 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 came on our picture that actually makes the network and we connect all those machines with this network and we use the p2p networking concept to connect all those machines right and p2p if you if we we're going to cover in very detail how the p2p networking uh, you know the works and how we can achieve the decentralization of that the another main important component which i wanted to cover here is that is the merkle tree what is a merkle tree it's a tree data structure and when when we say some merkle tree so it means we are storing a data in the form of hash and we're going to see in more detail how those merkle tree looks like and everything right so this is how we all the components logically connect with each other right so this is what i wanted to cover in this particular video and in the upcoming video we will see more detail about each and every component and thank you for watching this video if you have any feedback please feel free to put in a comment section and i just try to put what we're going to cover in the next section as well thanks for watching us please don't forget to subscribe if you really like the video if you don't like the video please feel feel free to share your feedback as well thank you very much